Fitzroy Island's an amazing place. I mean, it's what we call a continental island. And so corals, they form what we call a fringing reef around the island. Fitzroy Island is being surveyed for an ambitious new project called the Great Reef Census. Volunteers are being asked to take photos to help scientists gauge the health of the world's largest living structure. It's the same size as Germany or Japan. What we're trying to do with this project is try and reach as many of those reefs as possible and do a very, very basic kind of seascape reconnaissance. Volunteers from dive groups and aboard fishing boats are visiting more than 680 sites. I'm going to take one photo of my hand and then one photo of the reef. So when I come back to put them on the website, I know exactly which photos are for survey. Climate change is the most significant threat to the reef's long-term health, according to Australia's Reef Management Authority. There have been three mass bleaching events in the past six years. Last year, this area of the reef was part of the most widespread bleaching ever recorded, stretching from the north to the south. It's named Shark Fin Bay and we're expecting to see heaps and heaps of coral through here. So um, it has in the past had death from bleaching events, it's also had damage from cyclones, uh, but with favourable currents coming through here and a really healthy population of coral, we have always seen really, really fast and, and good recovery. I'm very concerned about future bleaching impacts on the reef. I mean, climate change uh, is very real. It is impacting the Great Barrier Reef. So when they get more infrequent, we're putting a lot more pressure on that system to recover. And that's why we need to act now. Reef ecologist Peter Mumby travelled to the remote Swain Reefs. 12 hours by boat off central Queensland. They're the farthest reefs you find offshore on the Great Barrier Reef. We're surrounded by massive schools of fish, a few sharks, and the most beautiful coral reef you could ever hope to see. As a scientific advisor to the census, he's working with a small team at the University of Queensland to classify more than 25,000 images. We visited some of the areas that received pretty high levels of warming in March of last year during the bleaching event. So we expected to see pretty clear signs of damage. And in the reefs that we visited, we just weren't seeing that. And we saw lots of reefs that were in a really good shape. Uh, we did see a few reefs that had been heavily damaged. And there's one or two dead corals I can see. So the project team is collaborating with the Reef Management Authority so it can target areas found to be in poor shape. If necessary, they potentially could include some of those sites for crown of thorn starfish control surveillance. Volunteers and researchers carrying out the census want the Morrison government to commit to a timetable to achieve net zero carbon emissions. The Prime Minister has conceded Australia's energy mix needs to change to get to net zero, but has resisted setting a target. There is no bigger threat to the Great Barrier Reef, there's no bigger threat to the planet than climate change. The politics and the, and, the, and the talk and the debate needs to have ended by now. It's action, no longer hope, we need. The Great Reef Census will be repeated later this year in an effort to raise awareness about the future of this world heritage icon. On the end of the day, the more people in love with this area, we can bring about this change because change needs to happen. 
Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.